Okay. Uh, hello. <clears throat> I would like to uh, start off by uh, welcoming, welcoming everybody to the Welcome Suite webinar on getting started using our product. Um, to start off, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Dan. I do the communications and PR with uh, the Welcome Suite. And sitting next to me is Vladimir, who's the head of our uh, project and also a Salesforce developer. Hi guys. And to start off with, uh, we would we would like to um, give you a little bit of a brief history of the Welcome Suite. The Welcome Suite started about uh, two years ago um, when we, uh, in our company soft theme, we started our own Salesforce um, department. When we got involved in our first couple of projects, um, our Salesforce developers noticed that there really was no good one tool to, to use. They were having to use many different tools to do their different projects and we were noticing that there just was a lot of inefficient use of the time involved. Um, Baldemir, do you remember these good old days of Salesforce development? Yeah, then I won't call them good old days, but I re remember them. Lots of wasted efforts, lots of time spent on doing some strange things. However, they're in past and now we're enjoying our current development. Yeah, so um, what, what we decided to do is, um, because we're a, a, a software development company, we decided to start our own internal project um, to, to meet the needs of our developers and that's when the Welcome Suite was born. Um, and this is really what makes us feel like we're uh, different than the other IDEs out there. We're not just building an IDE for the Salesforce community, we're building an IDE for our community. So. Let's get started here. Um, one thing I want to um, uh, make you aware of is really um, we're, we're going to get started with uh, just the tip of the iceberg of the functionality here. What I want you to, to be aware of is that um, in the future we will show you guys with other webinars some more in-depth use of how things go. Um, so Vladimir, how about we get started here? I think we need to open Welcome Suite and create a new project so we can start working with it. All right. And uh, as you can see here, we have the, the Welcome Suite opened right now. And what you will notice here is that you'll see the very um, probably familiar um, Visual Studio shell here. Uh, this is very nice for um, developers that are moving into the Salesforce area and for the new developers because it's just a very comfortable environment. Correct, Vladimir? Yep, it's really maybe one of the most recognized industry standard and of course for all developers who come from .NET world, it's their own environment. Okay, so let's go ahead and show them how to um, open a project. Uh, very simple, just go up to File, uh, New, New Project, and we, we launch the, the wizard from here. Uh, so, uh, Vladimir, what should we name this project to begin with? No, what should it be? Webinar demo. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so we, we name our project, we see the location that it's going to be stored in looks good, so we're going to click on OK. Now what we're doing is that we're starting to put forth the, the credentials to Salesforce. We're going to need to enter the Salesforce credentials so that we can do our first initial pull from Salesforce and get all the information um, stored locally. So we entered the credentials, click on Next. Um, so now the, the Welcome Suite is meeting up with Salesforce and we're getting ready to download the, the metadata. What is important here to point out to you is that we do not download all the metadata. Um, you can see here on the wizard that um, you, um, we have some set, of set, set default values. Um, you can click on these, expand them, um, so you can see under objects all the different objects that are going to be um, pulled from Salesforce. Vladimir, normally when we're downloading a uh, project from Salesforce for the first time, is the default values enough or should they really pay more attention to this? I think, Dan, then in most cases it's pretty okay to start with this default set because it covers all the required development metadata types like classes, components, pages, triggers, standard and custom objects as well as static resources. However, if, if you need some more kind of declarative part of development, you can just select layouts, custom labels and such different things. But in most cases, default set is okay and it's okay for now for us. Um, so now what we're doing is we are um, downloading from Salesforce. 
this can take a couple of minutes. Um, what's the longest that this has taken for you, Vladimir? I think it's usually not more than some minutes, but for huge projects with tens of thousands of files. Okay. So now that we have everything downloaded from, from the Salesforce, now what we're going to do is we're going to um, show you some areas that you need to pay attention to. Um, one area that we want to focus your attention to is the area that we call Solution Explorer. Um, one of the unique things about the Welcome Suite IDE is that um, you no longer are locked within the predefined Salesforce structure. Um, when dealing with files. You can add as many uh, folders and files as, as you need. You can even structure them the, the way that you need to have them. And I know um, this is one of the best things that um, Vladimir really, really likes about. Yeah, it was the first thing that we've mentioned when we started developing Salesforce with the force.com ID and other IDs because like from the other development environments would it be .NET development, Java, web development or anything else, we are getting used to organize everything as it's okay for us, so group features together, group different functionality, group different uh, groups of functionality together, and we'd, we are happy to introduce this in the Salesforce development world. Like some cases which I personally like are grouping together, uh, for example, Visual Force pages with their controllers, with their unit tests, with some related static resources, maybe something else. So we have everything in one place and we don't spend our time searching for different components of the application in the Solution Explorer. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and, sh and, sh and show them how we can quickly create a, a folder. So all you, we need to do is we just need to do a right click, we go to Add, Add New Folder, and let's give this a name, um, Vladimir. Let's name it Utils. Sure, then. Okay, so now we have our folder um, made. So let's show you how you can just quickly move things across folders. So let's go up into the search and let's search for some of our utilities. Um, after doing this, now it's just a very simple drag and drop functionality. Select um, what you want into the Utils folder and then drag them to, to the, your desired folder. And now you will be able to see that this has been accomplished. Um, this, th this is really cool. Um, let's see, next thing that we probably should introduce you to is the, the static resources. Uh, the main thing here to, to point out to you is that um, the static resources uh, the welcome sweep, um, they, they always remain in basically an unzipped format, so you can easily edit them directly without any additional actions. And um, I, I know Vladimir, this couple of seconds or multiple seconds you used to always be zipping and unzipping just drove, drove you crazy. Yeah, then not a couple of seconds, it's really lots of time when you need to just change one simple line in CSS file, you need to download the zip archive, unzip it, do your change, then again zip it and upload, so it really wastes a lot of time, and now I can just enter any CSS file and start doing some strange things here right in place. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the next step now that, uh, let's go ahead and create a, a file, uh, file in the folder. So again, um, very simple, just go to the uh, file, <coughs> the, the folder that you want to create a file, go to new item, there we go. And now we have our template wizard here. And Vladimir, why don't you explain a little bit more about this um, template? Yeah, sure, Dan. So first of all, I uh, want to point out this two different templates called Anonymous, Apex, and Query.soql. Uh, we have a separate and approach that is other from other IDEs. Uh, we treat Anonymous, Apex files as well as que SOQL queries as a separate files. So you can create lots of different code blocks in, like in different anonymous Apex files. You can store them as a part of the project. You can share them with your teammates if you use Git, SVN, or like any other version control systems. And the same thing for SOQL queries. And like what are the reasons to do this? Because we are not always doing some debug stuff in anonymous Apex and SOQL. Sometimes we have some long running or like 
some different snippets of code which we need to leave for years. For example, some uh, code to start batchable job or to start scalable job, which we may share with some administrators who do this time to time. So that's why we decided to have this approach. So in this window, you have ways of creating anonymous Apex and SOQL queries, as well as very basic, almost empty templates for creating Apex classes, pages, schedulable um, triggers, components. You also can create lightning bundles like for application for component. And we have two a bit more advanced templates here for batchable class and for schedulable class. We'll add more of them a bit later. However, right now we have two of them. And why we have exactly these ones? Because we think that batchable classes and schedulable classes maybe as well as unit tests are one of the most commonly created things in Salesforce. That's why we've decided to just simplify development life a bit. Okay, so um, because batchable classes are what one of our um, uh, more complex uh, ones here, let's go ahead and let's um, choose a batchable class. So we, we pull the batchable class and let's name this. What should we name this one, Vladimir? Let's stick to our great pattern and call it, I don't know, webinar batchable. Okay, so we, we go ahead and we give it a name and then uh, let's um, look under objects. Now, um, he, here what's nice is that it actually um, will, will list for you all the different objects um, that are under this batchable, correct Vladimir? Yes, so we retrieve all objects from your org which are suitable for using in batchable and in case of schedulable interface we have the same thing there. We are showing you only objects which are relevant for schedulable interface. So here we'll select, I don't know, account, and let's proceed. So right now, uh, yeah, it's already created. However, right now we were, we were creating the file in Salesforce itself, and if Salesforce says us that everything is okay, for example, if there is no another file with such name, so if Salesforce says us that everything is okay, we are ready to proceed, like right now. Okay, so let's now move on to a different part of our IDE. Let's move on now to the editor. Um, of course, the editor is where you're going to be spending a lot of your time. Uh, one of the first things I want to point out here is that we have um, customizable syn syntax highlighting. Uh, it's very easy to, to do your um, customization here. Just basically go up to Tools, um, click on Tools, Options, and then uh, fonts and colors. And uh, Vladimir, why don't we change the, the, the comments color here? Uh, what should we change the comments to? I think let it return back to the default values that we have. However, I like my red one. But okay, let it be default. Okay, yeah. Um, Vladimir likes his comments to scream red. I like mine to be more calming blue. Um, but that's what's nice here is um, it's, it's highly customizable. So um, wh wh whatever works best for you, you can now choose. Okay, so another um, nice thing here about um, in the editor is we have something that we call Apex Docs. And th th this is um, unique to us. Um, we probably added this functionality a lot because some of our first um, projects were very large. We were having to onboard new employees. They were very complex and therefore the, the documentation level is uh, very, very important. Uh, Vladimir, um, why don't you explain a little bit more about this because I know you love this. Sure, Dan, I really love Apex Docs. I try to force all our Salesforce developers to comment out everything that they develop. and. Uh, I'd really like to force, again, all Salesforce developers community to use Apex Doc as much as they can. Because uh, there's a lot of benefits from using Apex Doc. If you're using it, you don't need to maintain separate services like Wikipedia or Google Docs or having separate, separate text files with descriptions of what happens in the code or describing your architecture. You also don't need to put lots of different small comments in each line of code, just being a captain of views, describing each line. So you just have to properly document each method, each class in just using simple, some simple rules by Apex Doc. So you can see in this file that we've generated as from a template, we have some Apex Doc already filled in. And for example, I can just remove it and start typing again, Apex Doc or like multi-line comment. And the welcome suite will generate this header template for us. 
So I just need to fill some interesting information here describing this method, but I will do something correct. Also, I just have to go through all the parameters and describe them, and as well as return value. And very, very important thing here is not only we can see this in the editor itself, but we uh, Apex Docs are shown in the code completion when you just start writing the code. So once I'll start typing the same method here, I will see in this code completion hint here, I will see the description that I've just entered, I will see a parameter, and in description I also see return type and it's description from my site. And this is really very helpful in huge projects in in case of you have some dynamic teams, if you have lots of newcomers in your team. So these new people won't need to ask everyone these questions, what this does and where I can find something. They can just start writing the code and they will see help and required information as they go. And this really helped us a lot when we started working on huge projects. We just were documenting whatever we see, whatever we find out. And like in, in a month or in some weeks, we had all the code be self-documented. So it's really a very great feature and I like it a lot. I, I'd like you to use it as well. Yeah, it really is a nice feature and um, not only does it, uh, I guess the, the correct word is help force you to, to maintain good um, documentation, it doesn't just help force this, but it also is gives you a very convenient tool to, to do it with also. So, all right, the other um, important thing to mention here and, and highlight is, is the code completion and the um, code snippets. Um, what's kind of unique to us here is we actually do this locally, correct, Vladimir? Yeah, then we've decided to go all local when we started building the local suite. So we have built our own Apex parser, which provides us with immediate suggestions in code completion. So you can see as I type, I have almost immediate response. So we do not query Salesforce, tooling API, or anything else. We have everything completed locally. So we support all standard Salesforce Apex uh, classes, all the methods from there. We support all the namespaces. We, of course, support all your custom classes that you write and all standard and custom objects. So you can just start, start typing object name. You see all its field in it. And yeah, I guess we, we, are, we also support custom settings. So it's really helpful. And yeah, as Dan mentioned, we also have code snippets. So for example, if I start typing for we can have some predefined code snippets so it will generate for me some basic code here. It's also helpful and of course you can modify or create your own snippets just in the text editor. Okay, well that um, pr pretty much um, gives you the, 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 the highlights of the editor with the, the syntax highlighting, um, the, the Apex docs tool um, and also the the code completion and the code snippets. So probably the best place to go from here is to actually um, go through the build process. Yep, I've done some very valuable changes in the file and I want them to appear in the Salesforce org, so let's proceed then. Okay, so um, one important thing to, to point out here is that when you save the files in the Welcome Suite, saving the files j just saves them locally. It does not send or save to Salesforce. The, to do this, you have to do this in the build process. The nice thing about this is that you're able to build in batches now as you see fit. Um, Vladimir, how much time does this normally save you, or how much more convenient is this? So I, I, I won't say that it saves me hours per day, but however, it's much more convenient for me. I prefer to save changes all the time, and I don't want them to appear in, in the org until I think that they are ready and they are okay for other teammates to see them. So it really saves me some time each day, but it's much more convenient for me. Okay, so um, to, to do the build process, um, the simplest uh, way to do this is um, to, to look at the pending changes files um, panel. Um, the pending um, changes panel is where you can see all the files which will be sent to the org on the, the next build process. Um, so uh, let's add a little bit of a change here. And as you can see, as we add the changes, you can see the um, changes down in the pending changes. Um, also, just a little bit of a note, if you look back up in the editor, um, you can see this um, highlighting in the 
in the margin that also shows you the areas of, of the code that you have changed. So um, we now have um, pending changes, so let's move on and um, let's do a build. Yeah, I with the build, I really prefer using hotkeys all the time, so I would just press F5 hotkey, but let's do this from the menu, so I just build, build selection. And all the changes are being sent to Salesforce, and we can see that we have an issue, which I have just done. So we have an unexpected token. So yeah, we have error list panel just popped up, showing us that we have some errors and build was unsuccessful. This means that no changes were saved in Salesforce, even that other file was pretty good. However, they are sent in batch, so everything is rolled back. And we can see all the errors here. We can see what the files they are. I can just double click here to navigate to the error if I'm in any other file at the moment. And when I'm in the editor, I can immediately see this highlighting showing what is the error, where it is. I can see the small red rectangle here on the code map showing us the, some bit precise location in the document of the error. So right now I think I've just fixed it. I'll add a missing semicolon save the file and again start building. So we can see an output panel and we can see that all the process is documented. So we need to see succeeded. So the build took about six seconds and everything was okay. Our changes right now are in the Salesforce. Okay, so um, the next important thing to explain to you is that the welcome suite will not allow you to override another developer's changes. Um, as all of you that are familiar with working in Salesforce, uh, it's very possible be, to be doing your own work and somebody else is working on the same org, same same project, and, and you run into a problem. So probably the best way to show you how to navigate through this is just to show you the situation. So um, Vladimir, let's go, go ahead and demonstrate this to them. Sure then, so first of all I'll stick with this file again, I'll do some more changes in the file, so I'll add some another very helpful code, system.debug, done locally, we have an error here, and also I'll move to the Salesforce org, I'll open the same file, it's webinar batchable. And I'll, for example, change this text to another. And save changes in the org. And we'll get back to, to the working suite and now I'll try to build my changes. And you can see I almost immediately get the response from the working suite saying that file has pending several changes and I need to pull changes from Salesforce first. Okay, so our next step then is to do a pull from Salesforce. So um, to, to, to do a very simple, go up to the solution, explore, do a right click, um, pull, um, which will open up this panel and pull from Salesforce. So we click on, on the poll and um, you get another uh, window here and in this window you can actually uh, go with the default um, values here or you can actually um, pick and choose exactly what you want to pull from Salesforce. Uh, Vladimir, when, when is times when, when you just want to choose? Sometimes in some cases when I'm working in a huge team, I know that other developers, my teammates, have made lots of changes in the whole org, changing hundreds of files for some days, and I am working with only one file. I don't need their changes right now, and I really, like, my time is very short, so I just need to save as much time as I can. So I will, I will only select files that I'm working with, and I will get updates only for that file. However, for uh, new files on the Salesforce site that, for example, if I subscribe to Apex classes and someone else created another Apex class, it will be downloaded anyway, no matter what I've selected here or no. And right now I don't care about performance, about anything else, I will select everything and proceed with pulling from Salesforce. Okay, so right now we're doing the, the pull process. Everything has been downloaded. Click on next. 
And what this does is now it shows us that we um, that, that, that we need to resolve this problem here. Um, you can either do this by either overriding your changes or you can um, move on to the, 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 the next step of, of merging these. So um, obviously we went through all the effort to do this, so let's show them how they can use the merge tool. Yeah, then it's usually the proper way to just not discuss someone's change but do a proper merge. So we can press resolve button, we will see KD flanged or any other external merge tool. So by default we bundle KD with the working suite, however you can use Beyond Compare, Rahis Merge or other tools. But we stick with KDF as it's the simplest one. So on the right, on the left side of the KDF UI, we can see local changes. On the right side, we can see remote changes. And in the bottom of the KDF UI, we can see the resulting change resulting file. And we can see that there is lots of conflicts here. However, we see that most of them are white space only. So I will just resolve them, ignoring everything. It's not interesting. And here as well is also. But we, we see first proper conflict. We see that on the left side the file was the, was looking this way and on the right side we see some remote changes. So it means that in usual, in usual cases that some other developers put some effort and he knows what he does. So we will stick with his changes. We will again skip all this white space conflicts. And we will see another proper conflict, which says that on the remote side, no one knows about our new line of code. And I'd like to get it to the Salesforce. So in this conflict, I will use my local version. And again, resolve this white spaces conflict. And we can see in below that in a resulting file, we see changes that, I, that I've done locally and changes that were done remotely. So everything is just 30 seconds. So I'm happy with the result. I just Close KDIF, don't forget to save result. And I see this green status means resolving that everything is okay. I proceed next and as a last step of our pull process we can see the full summary of all changes that were downloaded. So in our case right now it's only one file, however usually you receive lots of different changes at the same time. So we finish, we reload the file as it was changed. And we can see in editors that we have everything here. Uh, one thing to note here is that after the merge process, your changes are not in the Salesforce yet. So in the Salesforce, we still have that remote version. And to get everything to Salesforce, we again need to be able to put it. OK, let's proceed. OK, so now we're um, proceeding with the make, putting all the information into Salesforce, getting uh, the reply back. And as we can see, it, this has now succeeded and up to date. So our job, as far as development, is done. But as, as you all know now, the, 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 the one job that is always going on is the test. Um, so what we've done is we've actually created our own test result panel for this. Um, what's really nice here is you're able to, to run tests in parallel when you're doing something else, so you don't have to do things just one thing at a time. Uh, important thing to point out here is that in the top level of this panel, you know, you'll see your, your test jobs, um, then you'll see your classes, and then um, you also will see, see your methods. Um, also, if I remember right, uh, Vladimir, in the, the newest uh, update um, of, of the Welcome Suite, we actually added another function here, correct? Yeah, small addition, but it's very useful. So if you select any method in the test results panel, on the lower pane you can see all the information required to fix unit test usually. So you can see the message from Salesforce, you can see stack trace, and you can see our latest feature, an ability to open log. So if I just open this link, I will see log opened in the working suite with some highlighting here. I can clearly see what's going wrong. So this is an addition in our latest version which we released last week. And right now, as a good developer, I want to fix favorite test that I see. So the quickest way to do this is to just to double click on a favorite method in the test results panel. It will bring me to the uh, unit test code in the editor. I will, at the, at, the, at the first thing here, I will notice the small red and green dots on the left side of the margin. These are test statuses that are showing near each test method which we detect in the code and they are 
displaying status of the last test run. So I can clearly see that this method is not working. And I will fix it. So I will do a simple change here. And so the as unit test is fixed, I need it to get to Salesforce and as a again as a good developer, I just need to ensure that my fix is working okay. And to do this, I will use another handy feature in some cases. I will use build and build and run tests. This option will send all the whole batch to Salesforce as usual build. However, it will detect different unit tests in the batch and will start a unit test execution right after the build. So I will click it. We will see our build in progress. Why so long? Yay. We see that build succeeded and we immediately see that our new test job has appeared and it's green so everything is passed. And another option in this case, for example, I I can run unit test in another way. I can just right click on a previous test class, right click it and select we run only failed. And we will see in, in a second that again new job was created and this time it was created with only one method. So in case if you have test classes with, I don't know, 100 different test methods with lots of DML operations which are being executed for 20 minutes, you can just run all the failed ones ignoring classic unit tests. And as I've shown you some, I don't know, basic and handy features of launching fixed unit tests or recently worked unit tests, you can always just press run test button you see the whole list of unit tests that we detect in the code. You can just expand any of test classes, select different methods, and execute unit tests. So then I see in terms of development, we are pretty done. We've done, we've write, written some code, we fixed some other unit tests, and we can proceed. Yeah, um, I see that we, we went through that um, pretty fast. So let, let's quickly do a, a quick uh, review on everything just to, to, to summarize everything everyone's had. So really on, on the Welcome Suite, the, the areas that we want to really point out to you today, first of all, starting with that solution explorer. Um, here, um, the main thing to understand is that you can customize your, your, your folder structure, you can add uh, folders, and it's very simple drag and drop functionality to move things um, b between different folders. Um, you um, have the static resources, and you also have um, Apex um, and SOQL um, folders. Um, Vladimir, did we s skip over this accidentally? Nope, nope, I've described this, so we are okay. Okay, just making sure on that one, because I know that's um, really important. Okay, um, from there, um, we also have the, the pending changes, uh, the, the pending changes window, uh, where you can um, see all the changes that will be being um, sent to, to Salesforce. Um, also, we have the editor. Uh, main things in the editor, um, the syntax highlighting, um, we have the, the, the code completion and code snippets, which are done locally for you. Yeah, we also have Apex Doc, my favorite Apex Doc. We also have some uh, not very advanced, however, pretty useful kind of code assistance functionality, like go to definition. So if you right click on any method or any local variable, you, you can see go to definition, which will bring you to, to the methods definition or to a variable definition. You can also, like, press Ctrl and also click on any variable or method, and you will be moved to it. Okay. Um, and also, um, we 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 had the the error list um, panel where we showed you that there was just very simple navigation to your error methods. And also, um, don't forget about that test result panel. Um, the main things here for that you would like to uh, remind people of, Vladimir. I don't know. Just keep writing good unit tests, and you always you always have lots of different ways rerunning unit tests or running them in the most convenient way in your use case, you can navigate easily to any test method and test class, just double-clicking it. 
in the test results panel. So just keep your test green all the time. Okay, so I, I guess that uh, kind of sums it up for us. That's uh, the, the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the Welkin Suite. Um, but it does give you enough information that you, you now know what to uh, really um, start kind of playing with what functions, what functionality makes the Welkin Suite uh, different than, than the others. Um, also, I, I would like to uh, remind you guys and and have you pay attention to our social media um, that um, we'll be having additional webinars in the future to discuss further functionality of the wel um, welcome suite. Um, so uh, let's move on now to um, if any of you guys have any questions f for us that we could answer for you concerning the welcome suite or um, any relevant uh, other questions that you have, please. Uh, Go ahead and, and type those into the comments for, for us. Uh, Vladimir and I will stay online for probably another 15 minutes in case something jumps up in, in, into it. So please feel free to ask us some questions. And thank you guys for your attention. And anyway, have a good day. Yes, thank you for, for, for listening to us. We, we, we trust that this was informational and uh, we, we look forward to uh, providing you with a great IDE. And I think we have we have one question regarding code coverage highlighting. So yeah, we have skipped this section. So I will describe it in some more details. We have a special code coverage panel here. It's opened in a usual way. I will refresh code coverage data. And at, at the basic view, I will see the plain table of all the code coverage information that we receive from Salesforce. I can just sort it in the way I want. So I will open any random file from here. And I will just click Show Covering button, which will highlight covered and uncovered lines directly in the editor. So this is pretty handy when all of us are just raising code coverage to the proper 75% value, at least. Usually we try to do this 90%, but it not always happens. And the next time if I will, for example, update code coverage, I will just press, press Refresh again and I will see the new code coverage information highlighted and shown in the table. Yep, so the question regarding Mac version is one of the most painful questions for us for, I don't know, the last almost two years. We are, uh, anyway, we have to do this and we still put, a, put in lots of effort to do this this spring. So we hope to have some first versions released maybe in closer to April, I guess. And however, we have really huge plans to release a proper 0 1.0 release by Dreamforce this year. But we will really uh, start releasing new versions this spring. Yeah, and just to add a little bit from my point on that, um, to, just to emphasize to all of you Mac users out there, we hear you. We 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 hear you, and we're working as fast as we we can on that. And as uh, Vladimir told you, the timeline, um, we're we're pushing really hard on this. So be expecting it. I I guess we will have a recording of the video available on our YouTube channel. I won't say that we will upload it in in a day or two. I think it will be maybe closer to a week later, but we will anyway have it. And we will also have the same like webinar, maybe with some minor changes in two more weeks. So the next Wednesday and Wednesday after the next. So if you, and anyway, if you have like any questions working with the working speed, like in a day-to-day -day basis, just feel free to communicate with us in any way that is suitable for you. Also, I think we will, uh, there will be some kind of email sent to you when we will upload uh, webinar recording, so I think you'll be aware of it.